Yeah, just grateful to be alive and to take every day as whether it's rain, shine, wind, it's just fantastic. Well, I turned up at the gym, done my warm up, stretching, proceeded to skip, and then about two weeks later, I woke up in hospital. Well, every morning I get there, Paul's normally there waiting for me, and he was that morning. And Paul goes in, starts stretching, starts skipping. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I think it was about four minutes past six, I hear Jumbo, Jumbo. Um, Matt Smith's waving at me, so I rushed out there, and Paul had fell on his side. I felt for a pulse, and there was a pulse. So Matt started to make a phone call for the ambulance to call him because of what had happened. And then all of a sudden, there was like this gasp, and I felt his pulse again, and there was nothing there. So straight away, he was on the phone, and the ambulance lady was asking, is, is he breathing? And Matt says, well, no, he's not. So told us into, resuscita into the, the, onto his back and gave us what to do. I'd done it before in basic first aid training with a boxing. But I never thought I was going to have to use it. You never think you're going to. So we're working away, we're working away. And I think, I think the first one arrived within four minutes. I'm pretty sure four to five at max. And I've never had such a dead arms for weeks because it, that pumping onto a chest, I got through about three minutes and I said to Neil, I can't do no more. So Neil done the last minute, went down and the boys arrived. And the next day I couldn't lift my arms. And I'm, I'm saying, I don't want to break anything. And the lady says, just do what you've got to do. Just do what you've got to do. And then these boys turned up uh, and from then on, it was just step back, let the pros take. It's amazing. It, basically, people don't understand that they've got this special challenge just to you know, push someone's chest up and down. And that is enough to help us when we arrive to keep that blood pumping around the body, to push that chest, to matter, to matter what tune you're singing to, to make sure you're just pushing it down. That saves valuable time for us as well. The more they can do that, the better it is for the patient and for us to have a more successful outcome. It's something that I've never had to do, and I hope I never have to do again. But if I do, I've now had that experience. It was scary, that's tingling on down the neck, the hairs on the back of my neck, to see someone I know that's been at our gym for so long. And as a, I've known him years on and off through the same kind of circle of friends, but that was horrific. That was horrific. Paul's always saying to me, you know, thank you, you saved my life, you saved my life. Okay, we did do something to save his life. But after that, there's a string of people, a stream of people, the ambulance crew, the, f the, the air ambulance, the St George's, the nurses, they've all helped. You know, so I feel a part of it. Yes, yeah, it makes me feel good. But it is a must, a must that you have the machine as well. What's it called? Defib. The defib, got to have the defib. We had it, but it was locked away in another building. We couldn't get to it. So now we have it on the wall and it's there for everybody. It's amazing seeing Paul fit and well now. It's, it's hearing about him even after about a week of us being there, hearing how he was uh, aggravating the staff up at St George's about he wanted to come out, he wanted to come home, he, and he just he didn't, he didn't want to be there anymore. They're doing a job, and if it wasn't for them, he wouldn't be there. Because whatever we'd done wouldn't have kept him alive long enough to do what you've got to do. But the, listen, I've worked in the health service, I've seen what goes on, and there's second to none. Just, just to thank everybody at St George's and the ambulance staff and the paramedics and, and Ian, Neil and Matt, just thank you for saving my life.